Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Game of the day from round eight, the Guitar Masters Open 2015. This is a heck of a game. As white, Shock Mamajara from Azerbaijan. And as black, current world champion Magnus Carlsen from Norway. Mamajarov is a half a game behind Magnus. And there's one more round to go. This is round eight. It's a nine round tournament. Mamajarov has to win. He's behind Magnus now. So he's going to go all out. Let's get to it. It's going to be a Queen's Gambit declined. Mamajarov is white. Carlson is black. Go through a few moves in the opening here. Eight six. No. I'll stop it here. A lot of us amateurs will back up the bishop to h4. It's the second best move on the computer. Frankly, I don't like trading bishop for knight, but you see a lot of the grandmasters do it. In this case, he did. And queen takes, of course, not to double up his pawns. e3, your dark squared bishop's already gone. Can't have him in anymore. Plus, at the same time, it guards the c4 pawn. Castles. Now it's funny how I've watched him go over the game. Uh, Danny King on his Play Chess YouTube channel does a very, a very good job. And this is the game he picked for today. And I agree as well. If you want a little more in-depth uh, Grandmaster analysis, go to the Play Chess YouTube channel with Danny King does a great job. He explains a lot of this opening. Rook to c1. Pawn takes. Bishop takes. Which is really unusual. I, I just don't care for that. And I'll tell you why. Is the fact that it gives white a tempo. No, granted it's not much, but any little bit helps. c5, pretty much standard. Castles, pawn takes. Knight takes d4, I think, is proper. But Mama Jaroff decides to mix it up a little bit. Remember, he, he has to win. Knight e4. What to do, what to do. Queen e7. Let's go back here. I like the computer move. Queen f5. He'll threaten the knight again. He just goes back to g3, but at least it gets him out of the center. But Magnus decides to go to queen e7. Pawn takes. Another thing I don't care for. I just don't like isolating that pawn. And you're going to see that isolated pawn ends up being a huge freaking deal. Pawn takes. Rook d8. Here we go. Knight c6. Going after the d4 pawn. Rook f to d1. Guarding the pawn. Bishop a5. Rook f to d1, according to the computer, was the last book move. I'm not up on openings. I'll assume that's correct. Now, how's he going to keep that pawn on d4? He has no dark squared bishop, remember. He traded it for the knight. Knight to g3. Wasn't a big fan of that. Maybe he hit the knight on c6 with a bishop. Bishop c5. Or excuse me, b5. Um, I don't know, bring the knight back to c3, which would be dumb because you just moved it so you can go d5. And now bishop b6. Now it's the computer that did that. It shows that black is ganging up on the d4 pawn. Queen e4. Got to guard it again. Bishop d7. You got to remember the whole mindset of this thing. Mama Jarov has to win. He can't draw. And he's got the white pieces. And this is a world-class player. <laughs> 27.50. One of the top players in the world. H4. It's okay, but... Bishop E8. That's a hell of a move right there. Now, that's one of the top three computer moves, and they're all close in score, but... Bishop E8. If you go to Danny King's video, he explains to you a lot in detail... Basically, what it does, well, it gets the bishop out of the way for the rook, but 
and guard some key squares right through here. As you're going to see, it stops this nonsense with the knight. Maybe later queen over. That bishop's playing double duty. It's doing very well. A3, rook d6, queen g4. White's a little cramped, but white doesn't know what to do here. He has to win, remember? Carson just brings his other rook over. Now he has no choice. He has to go d5. He just can't hold that pawn anymore. I mean, look how many attackers it has. It's got one, two, three, four. D5. Interesting move here. Queen F8. Get the queen out of the action. Now, well, you're saying we drop some peas. No, not at all. Because after rook checks, rook takes, rook checks, and white's hurt. Queen e4. Now the knight moves, hit the pawn again. Finally, he gives it up, threatens mate. And Magnus goes f5. And white's position is just, we're on move 22. And it's totally shot. Anybody else in the world besides Magnus? Maybe there's two or three other players. The game's already over. And he knows. And that's what happens to you mentally. You know you have to win. And you realize that the cards are just against you. This one's just over. So he plays queen e5. Knight takes. And this is where I think Mama Jaroff just... Completely loses it. Now, he's known to be a tricky player. When I say tricky, I mean uh, tries interesting stuff, sacrifices. But this one, I think he just does out of disgust. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Knight takes. He's down a piece for a pawn. And Carlson just simply goes rook c6. And I move 25. Shock Mama Jara from Azure Brazil, one of the top players in the world, resigns. As far as he was concerned, a loss was the same as a draw. And that's the way it is sometimes. But I think if you watch the video, I watch it on livestream.com. If you go guitar chess masters, you get to see all the all the rounds and all the commentary for all eight rounds with Peter Fiddler and Alejandro Ramirez commentating, doing a good job too. Shows him getting up from the table. He talked briefly with Magnus a few seconds, and then he just stormed off. It's what happens. You're just disappointed, and you lash out. So we all do that, even as amateur players and the world-class players. So there you go, folks. Magnus wins again. So now he is a half a point ahead of everybody else. Another game I'm going to be showing later is the Kramnik game. And Kramnik needs to win as well. We'll see what happens there. But anyway, folks, until then, I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.